Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll give some information on crossover and sequential studies. More after the intro. In the first four parts of this video series, you learned what biometry is, what the foundations on study design and hypotheses are and about causality and random effects in clinical trials. If you haven't already, you will find the videos in our CRA Basics playlist. We strongly recommend to watch them first. Today, we take a look at two interesting study designs. One study design example is the so-called crossover study in which each subject is treated with all therapies. The example shows a two-armed study in which all subjects first receive therapy and then, after a washout period, receive therapy B. It is important that the order of therapies rotates across the subject groups. Otherwise, apparent causality could occur. For example, if only collective one was investigated and therapy A was effective with a long time delay, whereas therapy B was ineffective, possibly the success of the therapy in collective one would mistakenly be attributed to therapy B. The advantages of crossover designs are that a lower number of subjects have to be enrolled and that the effect of biological variation is less. However, crossover studies are performed quite rarely because they also involve disadvantages. These include a longer burden for subjects due to the use of both therapies, including the washout period, the longer duration of the study and the obscurity of whether the washout was complete or not. Sequential studies have an interesting study design, which is often also referred to as adaptive study design. These start with a small group of subjects being treated with the study therapy. Subsequently, more and more subjects are enrolled until a clear decision on the study hypothesis is possible. In the diagram, this case applies to the point where the graph representing the subjects exceeds the threshold value for a significantly effective result or falls below the threshold value for a non-significantly effective result. Hence, the decision on the result of the study will not be made after the investigation of a previously defined population but will rather be made in the course of the study. An advantage of a sequential study is that the aim of the study may possibly be achieved much earlier and with a lower number of subjects than originally planned. Disadvantageous, however, is that the duration of the study and the number of subjects are random magnitudes. If there are small effects, the overall duration of a sequential study may clearly exceed the overall duration of a non-sequential study of equal size. The decision on the study design depends on the following four factors. The hypothesis, the type of objective, the organizational conditions, and the expenses. The hypothesis refers to the extent of the effect to be measured. The objective refers to the type of effect. The organizational conditions are, among other things, related to the frequency of the relevant disease, the type of study sites participating in the study, registered physicians versus hospitals, or to the number of already authorized comparative products. Ultimately, expenses play an important role as well, because studies cannot always be financed to the desirable extent. So much for today on crossover and sequential studies. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.